Yo. So what's up, everybody? Uh, Facebook kicked me off, so I'm fuck with the Zoom, but I got the Instagram going. Insta Facebook did not like the Joy of Lucas that I was playing, so I don't own the rights to that, by the way. I don't own the rights to it. Popping here. All right, everybody, what's up? What's up? As for those who don't know, my name is Mike James. I'm the founder and creator of the Change Goods brand. Um, let me hold on. Let me record the Zoom here. Anyhow, so my name's Mike James. Uh, I'm the owner and founder and creator of the Change Goods brand. Um, if you haven't liked our page, be sure to like our page. Um, today, I decided to go live streaming to introduce people into the method of Pilates, what the Change Goods brand is all about, what's the vision, and where's our cause, and what we're trying to accomplish. And also, I also want to be able to open up to some questions that people may have in terms of how could Pilates help their life? What is the functional movement system? Have you ever done guided meditation? Have you ever worked with breath work? Um, and then also, one of the strongest assets is your mindset in order to create a healthy lifestyle. So. One of the things that's really important when trying to focus and accomplish a goal is you have to be able to focus and understand what direction you're going. A lot of people have difficulty and challenges achieving their goals because like I'm someone who was guilty of it is that we just freestyle and we just don't write anything down. It's like when you go to the grocery store. The best metaphor is that when we go to the grocery store, we, we don't write anything down, and then you go, and let's say you had a $40 budget, and then you end up walking out the grocery store with over $100 worth of groceries, and then you put the groceries in your refrigerator, and they go bad, so it's essentially a waste of money, and also a waste of food. And so when you come to think about your lifestyle, whether you want to be healthy, wealthy or anything that you wanted to accomplish is documentation. There's a lean methodology theory where it says that if you cannot me like if you cannot measure it, you can't manage it. So documentation is important when it comes to achieving goals. One of the first things that I do when I wake up in the morning is I do some affirmations. Um, one of my inspirations, the people that I follow is the Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn, he is someone who is very inspiring. A lot of people may know him. Um, he's really popular in the network marketing community, and which, whether you have your own opinions about that, uh, network marketing is a good way to get personal development for free while getting quality products, but you have to do your research on that as well. But anyhow, so when it comes to documenting your goals, you want to write some stuff down. So let me grab pen and a piece of paper here. So, we're going to do something here. So when I, I got a book here, alright, let's do a Sharpie marker. Here. 
So, what I want you guys to understand is that what we're going to do today is I'm going to teach you what I do and also what I will offer to you if you ever wanted to do my service privately where I'm an accountability coach as well as a fitness instructor. I'm both certified in personal training and Pilates instruction. So whatever you want, I can accommodate your needs. I really like to focus on Pilates because that's what changed my life. It's very good for preventing injuries if you have any lower back pain, increased flexibility, and building a body and mind connection. It's one of the most important things that you can do is building a body and mind connection. I'm someone who was a former athlete. Um, I played basketball since I was nine years old on a traveling basketball team. And I played in high school, and I had opportunities to play in college, but I was misguided. And to be honest, that although I was pretty decent at basketball, it wasn't my true passion. You know, I still love basketball. I love the hoop. I still play every now and then, and I still love it. And But while I was in high school, I suffered a knee injury. And then it was a pretty significant knee injury. I had a slit in my patella. So... Whenever I would make a plant, and basketball has a lot of lateral movements, so whenever I would plant my foot, my knee would dislocate. It would pop out and then pop back in. And then it would swell up, and then I wouldn't be able to perform any flexion on it or anything like that. So after high school, I started taking some physical therapy because I started running, started exercising, and doing a bunch of other stuff. And I never really gotten connected to my body. I always knew how to do stuff. Like I would get on the floor, I would do a push-up. I could do, I was fit. I could do, I know how to do sit-ups. I know how to do all the training exercises. But I actually never knew why I was doing anything and never understood how I performed those exercises. So then I ended up going to BCC or Junior College that's locally here in Bavard County, my hometown where I'm from. Um, I'm from Palm Bay, Florida. Shout out Palm Bay. Woo -woo. So anyhow, um, one of the things that was really important to me is that I had to get well because I've always wanted to be able to use my body for the rest of my life. And one of the most important things that I've ever actually accredited to myself that no matter of how or where I was at mentally in my life and my desire and the things that I wanted to do, I had always, always had the willpower to want to have access to use my body functionally for the rest of my life. And a lot of people when they exercise, they tend to think that being sore is a prerequisite to how hard you work. I was someone who did that as well. When you do Pilates, you don't typically, you're not sore afterwards. You learn your body awareness, you learn the movements that you have and things like that. It's a structured system to connect your body and mind together. So one of the things that is really important when we're working with exercise, I'm actually going to run you guys through some exercises today. I just want anyone who comes on, and we're, like the ones that I have here, is that I want everyone to realize that what I'm teaching you today is I'm trying to build a stronger body and mind connection with you. So whenever you're able to exercise, you know what you're doing, and you're doing it safely and functionally. So now, back to time management. Um, when it comes to time management and achieving your fitness and health goals, one of the most common things that people say is they don't have time. Like, and time is a commodity that everyone has. One thing that every single person that we know that we have in common, every human being on earth, on this planet earth, has one thing in common. That one thing that all of us have in common is that we literally have the same 24 hours in every day. The difference between a successful person and an average person is what they do with that 24 hours. So me, once I realized it, that I needed to optimize my time. I needed to get serious about what my goals were. I needed to change. And what I needed to change was I needed to get organized. One of the things is, is that you have to document what it is that your goals are. So let's say today, I'm going to do this in real time right now. One of my goals is, is to do this live stream. So we'll just write down live stream, right? Then, 
And it's just, just don't even think about it. The next thing that I want to talk about is I want to help people you can't smell people get organized on the things that they want in life. So the So I'm going to touch on that. This right here, I'm someone by nature who's a freestyle. I have tons of things that I'm trying to do and tons of things that's locked into my head that I'm trying to focus on. So I want everyone to realize the number one thing I want you to take from the beginning of this live stream here and to the people on Zoom there is that I want people to realize that there's, there's nothing remarkable about me. Although I'm a positive mindset person, and I believe in self-confidence and self-love and actually talking to yourself nice. I believe all of those things. So when it comes to talking to yourself nice, one of the things that's the most important is, is that you just have to be real with yourself. Keep it 100 with yourself. Like if you're fake to yourself, you're going to be fake to other people. So stop making excuses about everything. Like, and I know it's so easy to play the victim. And everyone says that. And some people say it crudely. I don't say that disrespectfully like you're being a victim. There's true people who are victims of certain situations and not everyone's in a certain situation and not everyone has the same mindset. But currently we are in the age of information. The information that you have is everyone has it. We have access to it and it's certain things are kept from certain people and certain groups of people. And I'm, I'm well aware of that. And one of the things I really want to do is I want to give as much information to people that I know that I paid for. I paid for a lot of mentorships. I paid for a lot of like seminars to go to to get into the room with people who are successful. Um, one of the things that I really wanted to focus on is that, let's say when I write down after I want to help people organize their time. People don't want to make excuses anymore. Like this is how simple this is. Excuses. We're going to X that out. So now, to get organized, so I want to do the live stream. I'm currently doing that. Then I want to help people get organized. I'm speaking about that now. And no excuses. No excuses is you have kids, you have wife, you got to spend time with the wife. And then so you got to spend time with the wife. Um, your job, you're working tons of hours. I'm always super busy. And then so one of the things I really need to pinpoint the people, the most common one I hear all the time when I reach out to people is that they're like, um, you know, I'm really busy with my job and the family. Now, your health and your wealth are synonymous. They're absolutely the same thing. Your health and your wealth are synonymous. Your job is important. Your family is important. But you know what you also need to sustain those two things, both your job and actually spend time with your family? You need to be healthy. There's no, there's no way around it. Like, you need to be healthy. You need to be happy. And you actually, you need to focus on the things that you want to do in life every day. So what you do is you write those things down. So let's say a family is important to you, right? And let's say... Your job, your finances, those are important to you. Now, this is just something, and if you guys can see how I'm spelling, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Your finances are important. So your family, your job, and your finances are... So the common excuses that people make is their family, their job, their finances, and then they want to talk about, I want to improve my health. So now, let me flip this page. I'm going in a completely different direction now, guys. So let's say three things that people make excuses for. Right? I'm going somewhere with all of this, guys. The most important thing is that the three things that people make excuses for is the same reason why you're not achieving the goals and where you want to be. It's going to be family is one of them. I got kids. My wife is always making me do things around the house. And then it's, it could be anything. Your husband, 
is asking for a lot of your time and affection. That's all important. I'm not saying those things aren't important. You just have to optimize your time. So then the other excuses that people say is their job and their finances and they're waiting for things, right? Then the third and the final excuse that people say is just that I don't have time, all right? So here we go. Three things that people make excuses for, right? Is going to be family, job and finances, and time. So now, let's go and crack those things out. Your family. Your health and your wealth are synonymous. One of the things that's really important is that you have to spend time with your kids. That's your future. The greatest investment that you've ever made in life is the, the life that you created with any woman, whether you're with them or not, or a man that you created a family with. The, the greater pride, the greatest investment you will ever have is to invest in your children and to make them stronger and have generational wealth and make them happy. But also, when you spend time with your kids, you have to be physically active with them. One of the best ways that children actually learn is actually through playing, being physical. So, you're going to have to be able to bend over, get down on the floor, get up off the floor, run around at the park, lift your kid up, and all of these things. These are just simple, practical things. This is not a sales pitch on anything. When you spend time with your family, it's best and more efficiently that you're going to have to be healthy. The second excuse that people make is the job and the finances, and then how the job is actually part of the third excuse, is that yes, you need to work and have to have the finances in order to support your family, but your health is what you say you don't have time for. And if you don't focus on your health, you're affecting your wealth. Your health is directly synonymous with your wealth. That's as simple as that. There's no creative way to put it. If you're not putting your health first, then you're not being truly wealthy. Or you're just going to accumulate wealth. You're going to get burned out. You're going to get tired. And then that's when depression and the mental health starts tearing in on you. That's when that always is because you're not. You've got to find a way to exercise every day. So now, with that being said, Focusing on how to fit exercise into your life and your busy lifestyle. When it comes to exercise, although at Change Goods I offer services for Pilates, but I do mindset training and I'm an accountability coach as well. So not only when you hire me with my services as an accountability coach or a fitness trainer, you may think that when you hire me privately that you want to work on something that's superficial to you, right? You want a flatter stomach, and then you want legs. I also, you are my boss. You are my client. But I want to convince you that I want to help you sustain a lifestyle that helps you continuously be able to carry out and sustain the lifestyle to where you no longer need my services. I've trained you well enough to where you can actually stay mentally focused to do it all on your own. So... One of the first things I do is I have you write down a structured system of all the things that you really want to achieve. Now, when you achieve those things is that I'm going to have you get real, just as simple as that. Maybe write down every day the three things that you find most important that you want to achieve every day. Just three things. Start small. Start small and then add more to your list. When I first, I posted on my Instagram today and on Facebook one of my to-do lists. And one of my friends messaged me and was like, Doug, there's no way that you do all that stuff in a day. And I was like, yes, actually I do. But I didn't always. Like, So another good story about me is that I used to be heavy into drugs and alcohol. And I was mentally depressed, down in the dumps, and I was searching for things in all of the wrong places. And a lot of people say I was surrounded in the wrong groups and the wrong crowds. And then, although that may be true or not, I held myself accountable. Where I was at in my life was entirely my fault, and I realized it. Not everyone has their mindset like that, and I understand that you can't shake yourself off, and then everyone has to have to have their rock bottom. I actually hit mine. And then what I did with that is that when I hit my rock bottom, you could either go either way. When you hit rock bottom, there's two things that you can do. 
you can either search for change and change your whole lifestyle, right? You search for change and you have your change your whole lifestyle, or you can end the game. And then, like, this is very dark. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you that there's nothing more that you can do than, like, I'm very sympathetic to suicide. It's one of my things I really want to focus on mental health. But one of the things is, is nobody gets real with people and then listens to people until it's too late. And then they send the thoughts and prayers on social media and things like that. So don't think that I don't, I'm not sympathetic and I don't empathize towards suicide. But what I'm saying, the two options that you have once you hit rock bottom is to implement the changes or end the game. And then so there's, there's, or you stay stuck in there until you go either one way. You either stay stuck in the rut or you end the game until it consumes you. What I want to do with Change Goods is I want to reach out to people to tell them that there's a way out of it. And so what you have to do is realize you have to visualize the things that you want to do every day to change your life. Like, and it's not about like, oh, you changed your life and I don't empathize and people are out here struggling. We're all struggling. We're always going to be a struggle. Every day is a struggle. I'm physically exhausted. I wake up every day at 3 or 4 o'clock every day. Sometimes I only get one to two hours of sleep and it's awful. My production is poor, but actually I eliminated the alcohol and the late nights to where even when I get limited sleep, I still exercise, I meditate and clear my mind. So now, with that being said, I want to tell you that you should always focus on your family. Family is first. It's important. But also, don't use your family as a ruse or an excuse don't use it as a ruse or an excuse for a reason that you're not achieving your goals. And what I mean by that is that, oh, you know, the family keeping me up, blah, blah, blah. We have 24 hours in a day. 24. Let's say if you sleep 8, 10 hours, right? Sleep 10 hours a day. Give yourself 10 hours a day. One of my people I admire is Gary Vaynerchuk. And he's really big about sleep and how sleep is very important and how we all should get enough sleep. And then it's like, because it's not about how long you sleep, it's how much you hit the ground running and you keep going. And it's like you wake up, let's say you sleep five hours, you wake up and you get to it. And you know how you get to it? Is you write down what your intentions are every day. You, you just get that pen and pad out. You wake up, even before you go to sleep at night, write down what you want to do tomorrow. That's optimizing your time. Even if you only write down two of the things that you can think of right now, sleep on it. Like literally sleep on it and then get it going. Write it down and get the action. It's the only thing you can do. Literally get your sleep in. Don't use that the lack of sleep. But when you wake up and you get your 10 to 12 hours, and like even I have three children. They're all four Two and zero. Yes, I have a partner. She's extremely helpful. And then so, and like, but I also do my part. I spend time with my kids because my family is important to me. And because I say that, I don't pay lip service to myself. I don't just go out there and then when I need my family to be an excuse for anything, that like you, you make time for the things that are important to you. So people, a lot of people say that, man, why well, you know, spending time with your kids and the only thing you do is you spend five to ten minutes with your kids, which is awesome. If that's all the time that you have and you're also doing the other things that you want, you squeeze in that ten minutes. But time is of the essence. They're not going to be young forever and they're not going to be around forever. And then it's like, and you're not going to be around forever. Use the most with your time. One of the things I wanted to start doing live, I'm going to do this every Friday, guys. Like, I want everyone to have the mindset that I've developed to where if you optimize your time and it's like, I'm getting it done, I want you to get it done. Like, and I was someone, I made these excuses. I'm not someone who's just preaching and then I'm telling you that I was depressed. I was in drugs and alcohol. I was out of shape. Like, I was really in bad shape. Like, I actually implemented a program that I'm going to launch out that I have my before and after pictures that there's people who grew up with me it's like, man, you were always ripped and cut. But also, when I was always ripped and cut, I was always outside playing and I was always exercising. That shit didn't happen by accident, guys. I'm telling you that right now. And then so, anyhow, 
You write down your family. Your family's important to you, but don't talk like it, walk like it. Spend time with your family. Educate your children. Spend time with them. It's important. Do all of those things. You know? And it's really important that everything that you do is super, super, super important that you get those things done. And what I really want for all you guys to do is just write down every day the things that you want. So, anyhow, here we go. So now that we realize that we got to document the things that we want to do. You say your family. You know, you got your friends. And then you, that, all these things are important. Emotional health is just as important as everything else. But you have to allocate time for all of those things is what you need to do. Is you constantly, you allocate your time, you find out what it is that you want to do, where you're going to do, where you're headed, and then how you're going to do it. So, you spend time with your family. Let's say, like today, i got to help my son with his handwriting, right? And by the way, what time is it? It's 4.30, right? So it's 4.30. I'm going to show you something. I'm going somewhere with all of this. So i got to help my son with his handwriting. Bingo. Micah's handwriting. If you go look at my Instagram, that's on my to-do list. I'm also doing this today. Brag on yourself. So my son's handwriting. What I got to do, even he's four years old. So helping him with his handwriting, his attention span isn't that long. Even if he fights it and he's resisting it, the only thing I want to do is you got to get creative. You, in order to make that situation easier, yes, I know it's difficult to deal with a four-year-old. Trust me. My son throws tantrums. He says no a lot. He, so he makes me chase him. He doesn't stay focused. I get it. All of it. The one thing I can do is I'm the adult. I'm the example for him. And the only thing that I can do is maintain my composure and my cool and just make him do it on his time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one hour. I'm not going to write, do handwriting with a four-year-old for one hour. But one hour of my day is going to be me trying to get him to work on his handwriting. Some people will let five to ten minutes and get frustrated and then sit down on the couch and then put your feet up and then scroll on Facebook. Me, I'm going to give one hour of my whole attention to my family. Then I also put my son Kyrie. All right? I want to teach him to ride a bike today. If you follow me on Instagram, I'm going to post on my stories of me trying to show my son how to ride the bike today, as well as doing this. Now, I wake up at 4 o'clock. I also worked out this morning. Uh, I woke up today at 3.30 this morning, actually. I woke up at 3.30 this morning. The first thing I did was do my meditation. Uh, my daughter, she's 10 months old, Jada, beautiful girl. Daddy loves you. One day you'll see this. And then, so, anyhow... I play with her. I already did that today before I did this. I picked it up, gave her a little cuddle. She's 10 months, but that's going to be something I want to do. Teaching Kai to bike ride is going to take me another hour. But Micah can already ride a bike, so two hours of the rest of my day is going to be 5 o'clock when I'm done with this. So it's going to be, I'm going to go straight to the bike ride first. I'm going to go straight, Kyrie ride the bike. I have a partner that's helping me with I got a partner that helps me. She's taking care of dinner. Also, one thing, we communicate and we allocate time to where I can focus on things. Even if you're single mother, single dad, I know that's challenging, and I'm really compassionate to it. And shout out to you guys, because that takes a lot of courage, because it's even hard for me with a partner. And I'm telling you, but don't use my situation as an excuse for you not to optimize your time. So now, that's my family time. Two hours of family time. I'm still going to spend time with my girl. That's a non-negotiable. I'm going to talk to her. We're going to figure out. And we're going to spend time during dinner. And we eat dinner together. And that's when we're going to talk. So however long that takes. So three hours of my day today was dedicated to family. Three hours of it. I would love to have more time. But I got something that I'm building. And I got a mission that I'm on. So now I worked out for 30 minutes this morning because I only work out for 30 minutes. That hour stuff is crazy for you people. I'm trying to tell you that efficiency is the best workout. So anyhow, it's like, unless you're a professional athlete, you know, and this is what it is. Unless you're a professional athlete or 
you personally are trying to make physical changes to your body, you know what you want. It's been proven that it doesn't require too much exercise. Like, as long as you're doing it, like, say if you did 30 minutes today, you can do 30-minute exercises every day to equate for six hours of working out. So, anyhow, what you want to do is, now, family, your job. My job today, I worked seven hours today, if you want to count, from, I had a client from five, and then I got done with work today at, like, one. Yeah, and then in between there, so then let's say five to one. I don't even know how many hours that is. I just go. So anyhow, I did that. But I also have side projects that I'm working on as well. I did my budget with my finances while I was in between sessions at work. When I was up at four, that's why I found my time, my sweet spot is at three o'clock. So that's what I ended up doing is that I ended up finding out what time is it that you want to wake up? It's the most important thing that you can do. So now, what you do is you want three. So now, what time do you want to wake up? How much, how much sleep do you need? That's what you need to find out. How much sleep do you need and what is your number? Everything you do, whether you're doing your budget or you're trying to find out your optimal weight, how many days a week, you have to find out what your number is. Find out what your number is, and then you can start managing your time better. How much sleep do you require? How many hours do you work? Yes, everybody hates meetings. You have this much time and you have all those things. To be honest with you, what I'm going to do is I have videos on YouTube that they're going to, I'm going to start posting 10 to 15 minute workouts. No, it's not going to be anything, but I tell you what, one of the things that people make excuses of for doing any exercise is that they just do not allocate any time to exercise. Just do, do 20 push-ups, crank them out, boom, done. 20 push-ups. 10 push-ups is better than zero when you're saving money. Same thing. I'm not a financial advisor. I'll tell you that right off the jump. But I'm telling you that your health and your wealth is synonymous. It's exactly the same formula that it takes to have financial freedom. Is the same thing that it takes to have optimal health. And trust me, I'm working on both and working towards both. You're going to watch me grow. And I'm so happy that all you guys are following me and paying attention to this. So now... It's how, many, how much you want to sleep, how many hours, when are you actually going to make time to eat? Eat, drink, and that's your health there, right? So your budget, you still need to know how much it costs to live every day. One of the most stressful things that weighs on most Americans and most people in life, mental health is finances and how to come up with money. You need to find out what your number is. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just saying that your health and your wealth are synonymous together. You need to find out what your number is on how much it costs to live every month so you can actually find out how much do you actually need to work and because, or find a side hustle that earns you some extra income that you can also find a way to put it into your time because time is money. We get 24 hours. What are you doing with your time? So now, next, after this 24 hours you got here, so let's say we need 8 hours of sleep, so 24 minus 8 is 16, right? So now we're up to 16 hours that we have left, right? And let's say, let's say 8 hours, and then you can go, well, I need 10, I need 10, you know, man, I sometimes I need 12, but you got to find your number, and what I'm telling you is, don't pay lip service to yourself. You need 10 hours of sleep. You need to make 10 hours of sleep. Cut off that TV because you need 10 hours of sleep. Your biggest excuse for wasting your time is lack of sleep. You need to cut it out somewhere. You need, like, you may, because you may need sleep more than you need family time. Because if you're tired, you're not going to spend time with your family. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just you need to find out that you need to sleep. Me, I don't even know. I just go. 
but what I do is I do get really good sleep. Because I wake up so early, my body's like, it's time to go. My circadian rhythm is amazing. It's immaculate. It's not like, once, I, once I'm ready to go, I also stay sitting up all the time. Like, I, like, you'll never see me laying back like this on a couch because I don't want my body to think it's go time. When my body knows it's ready to rest is when I stretch out and then I fall asleep. You sit me down and I go to your house and you put that AC on me and we'll watch a TV, I'll fall asleep. Promise you. So anyhow, this is what we want to do. So you need to find out how much you want to sleep, how many hours you work, you want to eat and drink. So now, now that we know how much time we have, you're going to eat and drink. Don't even worry about that. You get 16 hours. Let's say you're going to work. Let's say 10 to 11 hours. Let's do some crazy number, right? 10 to 11 hours that you work. Let's say 11 hours, right? So then if you take 11 hours of work from 16, right? It doesn't even matter. Right now, you're working so much that you're actually trading your time that even the job that you have that you think is making you free, you're just working like I get it. You're providing for your family and doing things like that. But you need to also realize that you may need to find a way to make more money so you can work less. And then so or find a way, whether it's like investing, there's tons of financial things that you can look into. You just gotta find your number and find a way to get to the time. Measuring your time is the most important thing. So now, what I want from everybody here is the alright. So now, let me see this here. We're gonna go, give me one second here. The Zoom is all over. Let's stop recording. Yes. We're gonna click end this meeting. Yeah, give me a second, guys. Facebook. So now, now. All right, guys. So here we go. I just had to switch and I got on Facebook Live now, guys. So now, one of the things that I want everyone to focus on here. So now, at the beginning, I have a recording here. Just to catch Facebook up to where I was at there. So now, Facebook. What I was just talking about is... We're talking about how health and wealth is synonymous. What I was saying is there's everyone makes three everyone makes three excuses on why they do not focus on their health. Now, one of the things that I want everyone to know and then I want everyone to know that the three excuses that everyone makes when it comes to allocating their time, right? So, sorry Facebook, like it was being weird first. Uh, so I had to cancel out of it for a little bit to get it going. So everyone makes three excuses on why they don't have time to focus on their health. The three excuses that they have here is that one is that their family, right? We, they have too many kids, you hit, like not too many kids, or you say that, uh, you know, I got all these kids, I got to spend time with the kids, they're a lot of work, they're a handful, my wife, my husband, you know, like I need to make time for them and they ask me to do a lot of things. And the second thing, which actually might be the most popular, there's no particular order, but they're just the three excuses that people make all the time, is that their job, they work tons of, they work tons and tons of hours and it's just not enough time to focus on your health. So one of the most important things that people need to realize is that it's your family, your job, and your finances, and then they say they don't have the time because of those two things. So the three excuses that people make is family, the job, and their finances. So now, and, and the time, I'm sorry about that. Jobs and finances are both the same, and then it's family, job, and son. So now, once you realize what your three excuses are, 
you have to start with time management. So in order to manage your time, the things that you have to do is that you have to start writing it down. If you cannot man measure it, you cannot manage it. So now, what you want to write down is find out what your numbers are. Your health is your wealth. That's what everyone says. Your health is your wealth. Your health is your wealth. You heard it a hundred times over and over again. Your health is your wealth. What does that mean? What you need to do is you need to make time for your health, right? So in order, the reason why your health and your wealth are synonymous is because your family, right? Is one of the reasons why you think you can't focus on working out and exercising. Right? You got the kids, you got a relationship that you gotta uphold, you know? Your job, you work eleven to twelve hours, you know, and you gotta pay bills, finances, you gotta pay bills, you gotta take provide for your family. Those two are synonymous. The finances, right? Is now the finances is actually part of the things that go with your family and your job because you need those two and that's why you focus on your finances, right? Then it's the time. The time is the third excuse. You do not have the time to focus on your health. What I'm trying to get you realize is that actually you do have the time because they're both synonymous. In order to spend time with your family, you need to be healthy. You need to be well rested. You need to be physically active. You need to have a healthy, able body when you do so. Then also what you need to focus on is your job and your finances because that's you need a roof over your head. You need to feed your family. And then also you need the money to pay for the services that you need as well. So when it comes to the time, the first thing you need is you need to allocate your time. So what you do is every human being has the same 24 hours in the day. Every human being. Rich, rich poor, um, injured, bad, bad. Um, whether you got one leg, one arm, you got no arms, no legs, everyone has 24 hours in a day. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. So now, what you need to do is when you allocate your time for time management to focus on your health, your health is your priority. Your health will ultimately give you the wealth that you desire as well. So what you do is everyone has 24 hours, right? So then where I was at on Instagram and on Zoom, guys, I'm sorry, I've got to go over this again, but I really want to bring value to Facebook when I do this. Um, you can leave if you want, but I've got to have a workout. We want to do a quick workout, and they're also going to do some breath work. But I want to tell you most importantly about creating a system that you can focus on your lifestyle so you can find a way that you can actually focus on your actual health. So everyone has 24 hours. That's a given here, right? So let's say sleep is the most important priority. It's not how much you sleep, it's how well you perform with the rest of the hours of your day after you sleep. So let's say, let's go with the national average according to science studies, right? You can leave in the comments, you have a comments on what the actual number is, I'm interested in that too as well. But what you wanna do is that we got eight hours, right? So 24 minus eight, leaves us with 16 hours left in the day, right? So now, that covers the one excuse, is the time, right? You need to focus on sleep is most important. You have to focus on your sleep. So when you're focusing on your sleep, one of the things you can write down in order to prioritize your health is how much sleep, what is your number? Everything, the health is wealth thing, just like when you're doing your finances and your budget, if you want financial freedom, you have to find out what's your number. And you gotta find out how much does it cost to be you when you're doing your budget. So, yes, babe? Are you using another one though? You can take it. With the, with the oh, sorry, guys. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Hey, what's up, folks? So, then, see, there's family time right there. So, now, it's not really family time. You gotta do more than that. So, anyhow, you, you take the 24 hours, right? You eight hours of sleep. And you got 16 hours, right? So now, let's say the next excuse that people make to not make their health a priority is that they take away, right? You take away, let's say, when people say that they get tied up with work. Let's say that I have meetings all day or I have to do this. So we'll say 11 hours, 11, 12 hour shifts, right? So we're gonna take 11 to 12 hours away from that 16, right? So let's go 12, we're gonna go big or go home. 
Let's say your biggest excuse is that you have 12. This is what you have to do, just like for your finances. You have to do this in order to find out what your number is and how much time and how you're going to allocate it. So this is the best case scenario. To get eight hours of sleep, you have 12 hours. So now, you're working 12 hours. I'm going to tell you right now, you need to figure out, like, even though you got to take care of your family, if you, you need to sleep no matter what. You're gonna, if, even if you're trying to crank it out and work 12 hours to uphold, your job doesn't support your family in a healthy way. And like, even if you think that mo like money is important, but money, they say, isn't everything, but your health is everything. So if you're working 12 hours and you need eight hours of sleep, you only have four hours left in the day, right? No need to panic. Like, even though that's crazy to me, like, I, I would start figuring something out to where I didn't have to work 12 hours. And then, so, I mean, and it's possible, guys. You just got to get creative. And then that's one of the things I want to bring to you. If you write it down, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. So you have to find out what your thing is here, right? So that leaves you with four hours after you work, uh, after you sleep and work. You, you spend... 20 hours of your day with work and sleep. So at least with four hours a day. Now that may be depressing. Just like if you ever work with a financial advisor and you ever did like a real budget and you do your finances and find out it's depressing. But we're focusing on your health right now and how it truly is can lead to your wealth. So now that leaves you with four hours to do everything else inside of the work. During work, you'll find a way to eat when you're on the clock. And then to be honest with you, in that 12 hours of work, no matter what, if you actually physically measured it, if your boss measured it, like the hardest working person in the world is not going ham for 12 hours straight. There's some time where you have some idle time in between, you get a one hour lunch. So now, let's say, let's so we're gonna take that 12 hours and then that one hour lunch, we're gonna add that to it. So now, you find out during that one hour lunch, you wanna focus on your health. You probably shouldn't eat the heavy cheeseburger because you need to start eating healthier in order to actually optimize the time that you have. So you need to focus on your diet. So your water intake, you got 12 hours to do things. So with that work, you need to find out what you can focus on your health to optimize your time while you're at work. Because your, your, your biggest time, that you, you spend more time at work than you spend time sleeping. So you need to find a way to optimize the time that you spend at work. That's where you're gonna eat, Man, I don't even see where family time fits in with 12-hour shifts, guys. Like, even when you got your days off, if you're not focusing on that eight hours because you're, like, you sacrificing it for family time, maybe you need to just sacrifice the family time during the week for that 12. I don't know. If you guys want a consultation and you want to come with an assessment where I'll come in and I'll, I'm going to come in and I'm going to make you do all this stuff. That's one of the services that I provide is that it's time optimization and time management is one of my strong points. And what you have to do is you have to allocate where's your time being spent at the most so you can make your health a priority. So now, you're down to four hours. So now, with that four hours, I don't care what you think that your goal is or not like that. You might have to look into some high intensity training, which I also offer as an instructor. Once I get down to your app, I can coordinate a workout regime that implements your actual physical health goals that you want and also with your time. So that's what I go in when I give my assessments. I actually go in and I find out what are all these things that we can do. How much time do you actually have? Then I'll ask you what days do you have? What's your priorities? What time do you want to spend with your family? Like I was saying on Facebook, I made a post earlier about my to-do list. One of my friends messaged me. He's like, there's no way you do it. And I absolutely do. And what, what I don't finish, I leave to the next day, and that's what I write. So I optimize my time by writing every day on things that I need to accomplish and I need to get it done. But in order to stay fresh in your mind, you have to write it down. And then you can focus your mind. Your mind is more well-rested when you write things down because you're not stressed out about having, you're not stressed out about having all that time. Now. So anyhow, after you find out how much time you have, so now, we'll, I'd say I'd recommend with family time, you're going to have to spend one to two hours with your family. So now, you're down to two hours left. But we gained one more hour back, so we got five hours, so you got three, because you're going to use... 
your lunch time is what I'm going to recommend to work out. Like, you're going to find 30 minutes. Now they make these little wipes to where you can wipe your armpits and then you can keep up with your hygiene, wipe your growing down and things like that so you don't stink when you're going back to work if you're someone who has to dress up. A lot of people work from home today, so that's one thing we want to focus on. So anyhow, what we're going to do here is that, go to the next page here. So now we're down to three hours left in the day. Now. The good news is about that three hours is not a lot. The good news is you know that you only have three hours to do everything else it is that you want to do. So now this is where it comes into how much do you value Netflix? How much do you value your escapism strategies there? It's like the things that you do to escape from the reality that all you do is work and sleep. And as crucial and harsh that is, that's what I will say to you is that how much do you value work and sleep? But I don't recommend sacrificing your sleep. I think it's easier to find a way to save time at work than it is because no matter how, you, you, there's a way to be more efficient. You can probably cut down to 10 hours of work, guaranteed. Whether you're off-site, on-site, and then maybe you need to find out a way that, maybe you need to find a job to where you get more time. There's plenty of ways to be happy out there, guys. It's just you can't fall complacent and get comfortable. One of the things that COVID blessed me with was it taught me how to pivot out of the situation that I was in, so and that I was comfortable with. My lifestyle that I was comfortable with, I felt complacent and I had to do it. So now, anyhow, one of the things, so you got three hours left. Now the family time. I recommend two hours. So now we got one hour left, right? So now, you found out that you have one hour left that you're going to do here. You have one hour to do, maybe if you didn't do the exercises or lunch, but you gotta spend the two hours with your family. Maybe, actually, you probably don't even have the two hours for family time because if you have 12 hours and you're getting your eight hours, let's say somewhere we wake up at eight and 12, your job even keeps you away from your family. What you need to do is just, I would recommend just writing off, spending time with your family, and then your two days off. But if you keep up with your sleep, in your circadian rhythm, to stay true to your sleep schedule. If you're a weekend warrior and you got Saturdays and Sunday, that's where you make up your family time. Because then you have 48 hours of family time and you can get quality out of it. So maybe during the week while you're working, you just focus on sleep, work, and then that's what I would tell you. Like you only have, like, and then I recommend finding where you get exercise, maybe only three to four days a week, like three days a week. And then that's where, if you eliminate the family time and maybe do only 30 minutes, one minute with that with your girl, have a little date night, maybe go grab a little coffee, spend some time watching Netflix. Like that's important. All of those things are important. I'm not telling you to give those things up. You just have to find out where you have time with. And then it's like all work and no play makes whoever a dull boy, I forgot whatever that movie is. So now guys, now that we figured out the time optimization, let's get to the nuts and bolts of what you guys want to know. You want to know what skills do I have as a personal trainer and a Pilates instructor that can actually help you guys actually optimize your health. So at Change Goods Brand, one of the services, I've been a Pilates instructor for 15 years. 15 years I've been studying the method of Pilates. I've seen, I've, I've worked with professional athletes, um, professional actors, professional musicians. Um, I'm New York trained. Like I spent time and worked in New York. Um, I studied under Jane McAllister and Dave Bryant too. Really respected um, Pilates instructor. Like Jane is really widely accredited human being in any ways, and I get a lot of my knowledge from her. So, with that being said, is that the method of Pilates is basically about spinal alignment and building the body-mind connection. One of the things that's really important with your health also is optimizing your health with, like you wanna focus on body-mind connection and then also you wanna focus on your mental, like your mental health. So what you wanna do is you keep working hard and you do all the things that you need to do. So one of the things that's really common is with meditation. One of the things I recommend when you wake up in the morning, that's your, your morning, like your 12 hours of work, that if I were going to do your time management when you hire me as a consultant, is that your commute time is part of your job. So even if you think you only work eight hours, 
you commute maybe another hour and a half back and forth to work. That's something you have to allocate in your 24 hours of time that everyone has. So you need to think about those things that even when you buy a home, like it's just like when you're investing in yourself, like one of the biggest things that when it comes to investing, like the reason why I become more into the financial side of things is that I invested in my health this whole time. And then I didn't realize with finances that how synonymous it was that I needed to be healthy in order to perform all the things that I said that I cared about. So anyhow, when it comes to, let me get the camera set up to where we're going to do some working out now. With meditation, what we're going to do, so now, I was going to do this at a little fancy studio that I was going to go to. I was going to do all of this at the fancy studio, but I wanted to make this a little more real about, like, yeah, it's super casual Casual Thursdays, guys. Or is it Friday? No, it's Casual Friday, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyhow, let me get down on this ground. Let me adjust this here. So, now, what I want everyone to realize so, when I wake up in the morning, this is exactly where I work out and I do all my meditations every morning. I do it here, right here in my garage, or I like to call it the Change Goods Studio, my home base business there. So anyhow, um, what I do is I get down on the floor. Like I like to sit down on the ground. One of the things that's important is that you keep your spine straight. Now, when it comes to meditation, the one thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to overthink anything. The whole purpose of meditation is to actually be still in the moment and calm in your mind. So one of the things that we're gonna do is we're gonna sit here, sit here nice and calm, you're gonna sit up nice and tall here. We're just gonna do a quick guided meditation after everything that we've done here. And I appreciate you guys for listening to my lecture here. So you're gonna sit with your back nice and tall. I prefer to rest my hands on my knees here, right? You keep your spine nice and straight, your shoulders back, and we're going to do a quick body scan. I want you to wiggle your toes, even if you're sitting in your chair, just wiggle your toes. Focus on lifting the crown of your head towards the ceiling. Don't worry about the breath, don't worry about anything else. I want you to wiggle your toes, roll the feet, fill the calves, work your way up to the knees. Then go to your thighs, all right? Then go to the thighs. Focus on your lower back. If you can feel that in your lower back, that you feel like you're slouching and you're slumping, use this opportunity to sit tall. Keep the shoulders back, keep the core engaged as you do so. When you meditate, it's okay to keep your eyes open, but keep a blank gaze when you're doing so. So now you keep the shoulders back, you rest your hands on your knees. Back nice and tall. With the body scan, that's the body awareness. You want to sit nice and tall and alert. Now, breathing. We're going to focus on the breath. I want you to unclench the jaw. Pull the shoulders back. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Find a nice rhythm, inhaling. And then exhale. You wanna sit nice and tall. Shoulders back, inhale through the nose. Exhale. It's okay if you lost in your mind. Work day is busy. Had a rough day. If the mind wanders, it's completely okay. Focusing on the breath, inhale through the nose. Exhale. 
Man, keep the breath flowing. Inhaling through the nose. Exhaling through the mouth. I want you to bring the legs together. Bend the knees. Place the hands down by your side. Bend the knees, lift the waist, and you're going to roll down onto your back. If you're still in the chair, that's completely fine. What I want you to do here is to feel your spine rest in to the mat. Keep the neck long, the rib cage in. Good. Engage the abs here. What we're going to focus on, we're going to focus on diaphragmatic breathing. It's really important in the method of Pilates it relieves anxiety and tension in the body. What I want you to do is you're going to inhale through the nose. Expand the lungs, exhale. All the way deep into the rib cage. Inhale through the nose. Exhale. Fill the lungs. Inhale. And exhale. Don't worry about anything but focusing only on the breath. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Totally sink. Rest flat into the mat. Inhale. And exhale. Don't worry about anything. Inhale through the nose. Exhale. And it's completely okay. If the mind wanders. In the diaphragmatic breathing, when you exhale, you want to make it as if you're trying to see your breath in cold air. Not the puppet lip as if we're blowing out through our birthday candles. Let's exhale. Cleanse the lungs. Inhale. And exhale. Just be calm. And then exhale. Inhale through the nose. And exhale. Now, now that you're flat on your back here, I want you to bring the arms up over your head, expanding the spine, stretching the spine with your arms over your head. Even if you're sitting in a chair, sit with your back all the way straight and lift your arms up to where your arms are alongside your ears. If you feel like you're shrugging, pull the shoulders down and connect to the lats. Even if you're sitting in the chair, the challenge will be is to tighten the core to maintain the erect posture that you have. If you're laying down on the floor with me live, I cannot see guys. I just want to guide you through this with me. If you want, I mean, I do 30 minute assessments if you would like to get deeper into the connection just to be in the stillness. Even if you just want one day where I just run you through a 10 minute meditation, I'm available to that. Be sure to DM me or leave your email and your contacts in. Now, what we want to do is I want you to engage the abs, keep the arms up over your head, keep the neck long, lift the leg up. Tabletop position and lower it down. Keep the abs engaged, lift the arms up, the heads down, and then up. What I want you to pay attention to is that you're not lifting with your back. You engage the core, keep it tight. You should feel the movement of the leg and the core. It's very subtle. This is not trying to get the flattest stomach. This is building the connection with the abs. So then you lift it up. And then you press it down. You lift the abs in, gently press the foot down. Inhale up, exhale down. Good. Now keep that foot flat, lift the abs in, bring the other foot up. 
you lift it up, and then you bring it down. Pull the abs in. Lift it up, and lower down. Good. Lift it up, and lower down. Good. Inhale up, exhale down. Good. Four. Lift three. Focus on the breath still. Inhale. And exhale, two, and one. Now, this exercise is perfect if you have a bad back. The idea is that you're trying to, what do you need, The blue ones? Okay. So then, now, what you want is to keep the core engaged here. You're going to bring the right knee into your chest. Keep the core engaged. Oh, she's not happy with you. And then now, lift the arms in, and bring the legs into a tabletop position now. Now. I want you to keep the core engaged. Right here, the only thing I want you to do is maintain keeping your pelvis neutral. The idea is that you don't want to bring the knees too far in to where your tailbone curls off the floor. This is trying to teach you spinal alignment. You bring the knees away until the spine is completely straight. Right here, with the arms over the head, the obliques is helping stabilize the spine. Actually feel, try to build the connection. Contract the obliques. By pressing the knees together, you pull the abs in and up. You lower the heels down, and then you lift the heels back up. Good. Keeping the core engaged. You press the heels together. Tighten the abs, and then bringing it back up. Good. Inhale. Lift. And down. You keep the knees together. Down and up. This is designed... I'm not trying to kill you guys today. I'm trying to show you spinal alignment here. Two. And then the last one. You rest there. Hold there. Rest the feet flat. You keep the connection with the abs. You bring the arms up. You keep the neck long. I want you to reach the hands towards the knees. You lift the head, neck, and shoulder up. You look down into your belly button here. And then you roll back down. The hands go back up towards the ceiling. You're not moving the arm. The idea is that wherever the chest goes is where you lift the head up, looking down into your belly button, and then you roll back down. This is teaching you the upper flexion so when you get all the way up, you can reach, and then you roll back down. Inhale and exhale. Inhale back. Exhale up. Good. Roll back. And then down. This may seem subtle, but this is very important for spinal alignment. And now, because you can do all the crunches in the world that you want. The idea here is that you're trying to move with purpose and intent. You're trying to keep the spine long. Like if you're someone with a bad back, this is perfect for you. What you're trying to accomplish here is you're trying to get more aware. You already know, if you ever went to a doctor, maybe you're suffering with some back pain, with some spinal alignment, one of the things that you need to know is that you need to be aware that your neck, your cervical spine, you have the thoracic and the lumbar spine. You lift the abs in and up. The idea is that you engage the core. It's like if you have back problems, I personally think injuries are a blessing. 90% of my clients are someone with an injury. People find Pilates through injury. That's how I personally found Pilates. But if you're someone who is healthy and able-bodied, it's like you either go ham until you crash, and then what happens is you have to be scaled back and recommended to a doctor. I recommend actually start getting more body awareness because even if like you can know all about technique, the ego is a beast. Like, and don't get me wrong, I really like, I like weight training. I have nothing against weight training. I have nothing against any method of exercise. I look at exercise like religion. However you find your way to your place, it's all, that's all that matters. Whatever you find your nirvana, whatever is your place and your happiness, is the best way. The only thing I care about is that when you get there and how you get there, I want it just to be safe. That's the only thing I care about. Safe and kind to your body. That's the only thing I care about. So now, anyhow, 
Now, once we get the upper body flexion, we lift up here, we pull the core in, we look down into the belly button, and now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. Stay up, engage the core, and then down. Lift up, and then down. Good. Pull the abs in, come up, and then down. Good. Lift the abs up, and then down. Inhale, and exhale. Four, three, two, and one. Now, stay curled up. Keep the core in. Keep the shoulder blades off the mat. Pull the core in. You want to make sure that you're not holding yourself up with your neck. And you may not have enough flexion. Even if your neck hurts, lay down on this next exercise. Right? But if you have a healthy body, what I want you to do is take your arms, make a T with it. I want you to relax and let gravity press the limbs into the floor here. Right? Then you engage the abs, you bring the fingers together here, right? The neck is long, the shoulders down the back. What you want to do is you want the upper rectus here and just here, the, under the floating ribs here. You go right here and you press the fingers together. What that's going to do is bring more energy to the core when you lift your head, neck, and shoulders up. Then you're going to lift the shoulders up, you bring one leg up, bring the other leg up. Then you stretch one leg long here, right? You pull up and then you switch. This is just a five exercise core attack that you reach out and then in. Tighten the abs and lift up. Five, five, four, four. Tighten the abs. Three, three, two, two, one. No speed, control. Plus one. Straight legs out, bend the knees. Roll down. The hands go down by your side here. Good. So now, who's this? I think I got a visitor here. So, anyhow, now, what we got? There. Good, good. You want me to take care of that for you? Sure thing, if you don't mind. <laughs> I see you in the middle of your workout. So yeah, that's no, all good. There you go, sir. Yeah, I appreciate you, fam. Have a great day. Thank you, Sorry guys, sorry about that. Multitask, multitask here. So now, this is what I was talking about was that family time. You gotta optimize your time. So now, you wanna sit here maybe go? All right, so now, what you want, here, see that, you see that though? Say hi. Huh? All right. So now. Daddy, work out real quick, okay? We're playing a little bit. Or you want to go now? All right, guys. I'm going to do this with the baby on me because that's the only way she's going to be happy. So now, ready? So now, hold here. So now, even with the back flat and even with the baby. So now, what I'm going to do is I want you to hold this up here. You lift the head, neck, and shoulders up, right? Then you bring that same knee up here and then the other one here. You bring the legs out, bring the baby over your head, and then you bring it back up. Bring the baby over your head, and then bring it back up. You bring the baby over, keep the arms straight, and then back up. Down, and then up. Down, and then up. Three, two, 
and one. Bend the knees and you come back down. Woo, with the baby. Then, so now what you do is going to hold the arms straight. We're switching to the baby workout here. And then, oh, oh ready? Up. And then down. Last time. Up. And then down. And then up. Are you happy? Can I put you down for a second now? No, you're not going to have it? So anyhow, so now, let's get back to where we were at now. She might knock that off, but she's good now. So now, next, after we do those exercises, you roll down flat on your back here, right? So then, what you're going to do is we're going to bring the right knee into your chest, the left knee into your chest. Now you lift the head, neck, and shoulders up. Now you reach the arms long. You keep the elbows high. Shoulders off the mat. You engage the core here. You pull the abs in, and then you go out. Switch, 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 switch. Pull the abs in. Three, four. Tighten the abs. Lengthen the leg long. So even the pause for technique to feel the flexion in your abs is really important. Reach out, and then in four, four, three, three, two, two, one, and one. Now bring the knees in. Lift it up here. Tighten the abs. Reach out and then in. Inhale out. Exhale in. Four, three, two, and one. Good. So now rest the head. You're going to rock up to a seated position here. Because I got to get a baby out of dirt. <laughs> what are you doing, girl? Get out of there. Sorry, guys. Time management. Time management. So now, anyhow, right back. Jada, come here. Come here. <laughs> You're so cute, girl. Come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Love you. There we go. Good girl. So now, we're going to lift the head, neck, and shoulders. Bring the right leg in. Stretch the leg up and out and switch. 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 Now, legs go straight up. You pull the abs in deep. You lower the legs down. And then you lift them up. Tighten the abs, lift. Really focus on the core is what lift the legs up. Shoulders off the mat, little yeah. down, lift them up. Good, four, three, two, and last one. Bend the knees in, sit up, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so now. I had a 10 month old girl on the tear here. We're gonna cut it short here. But what I wanna do is we're gonna do an exercise for your arms here. It's called the Pilates push up here. How'd you do that, girl? Yeah, yeah, I know, you're my baby. You ready? So now, what you want is here is your hand should be directly underneath your shoulders. You want to point your feet so you're here. Come on, baby. No, no, baby. Uh -huh. Actually, you're going to mommy now. <laughs> you're going to mommy. Again, time management. So now, you want your arms straight here, hands underneath your shoulders. That was a lesson in actually what I was preaching about earlier. It's, I've already worked out, this is like my third time working out today. And then so, anyhow, is that 
Never find an excuse for a reason to stop you from what your ultimate goal is. So even though my daughter came out here, she's 10 months, I have the same thing with family. And then it's like, it doesn't matter what it is. What's important is, is that you, you stay focused on your goals because I know what it takes for me to be happy is that I can be a better father and a better partner to my family. If I stay true to my own personal happiness and focus on your self-worth and the things that you have and dear to you, if you stay focused on your goals, write it down, know your intentions, live intentionally and know your purpose, doesn't matter what. Even if I don't get the work out of hour, like if like I'm gonna be satisfied with doing this because this is like my third time working out today. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that you gotta make time. Like I still like I just started doing this real estate investing thing and I really love it and I gotta make time to actually do the work that my mentor is actually giving me. Like I have to implement it. And then I still have family. I have a business that I'm trying to run. I have actually three businesses that I'm trying to run. And then I also like, and I'm always developing and I'm trying to find things. So actually it's not like a flex that I'm trying to do. I'm trying to show you that there's a system for happiness. And then what I want is personal happiness. To change this brand is that I'm trying to inspire someone to change their lifestyle for good. Like, and it's not like live by the edge, be straight edge, or I'm sober, or anything like that, which I am, I don't drink. And then so it's like, it's not about that. That's not what the change is. Like even people who may have known me in the past, like they may be like, oh man, is this about the way you changed as a person? And it's like, no, it was inspired by that. You know, but it isn't the reason, it's not the movement of the things that I'm trying to do now. It's what I'm trying to spread is that what I, I'm, I'm on, like, I'm almost at my peak nirvana of the life that I want. Like, and you're, I'm documented, this is my journey, this is my story, and this is how I'm doing it. And my, what I want to give back is to show people that actually your happiness is your personal happiness and but your health and your wealth is something that you have to you have to focus on your happiness and what I'm trying to offer is a structured system that once you join change goods brand and you take me on and you're one of my clients I come I don't come into your life and then tell you what to do I listen to you as a client on what your needs are and then I tell you you write them down you see what you want and then we're going to work on accommodating the lifestyle that you can have that it's your own personal goals. The only thing I'm going to do is keep you accountable to your work. Then I'm going to use my expertise in health and fitness and wellness and meditation and breath work in order to give that to you and keep you structured. So you, I can take care of the part where you don't have to think about your fitness. I can do it virtually, in person, or even at the studio at Pilates on Fit. Either way that you want it. If you're somebody who needs someone there for accountability, I can meet you there. If you're somebody who just needs someone to help you structure your workout towards what you want, whether you want diet, nutrition, and meal plans, I can also help you with that as well. Um, I'm also going to hire, like, I'm working on hiring someone as a massage therapist so we can do, my clients can have access to a massage therapist as well. So if that's something that you're into, be sure to like leave your email and, and hit me up in the DMs, personal. I also have these shirts available that if you guys would like to purchase some apparel, 10% of every apparel purchase that you make with me at Change Goods Brand is going to go to support uh, my cause of the month. My cause of the month is going to be to write love on her arms. To Write Love With Our Arms is a brilliant nonprofit organization that is geared around helping people support, help support people who suffer from depression, mental health issues, addiction, self-injury, and all things related to mental health. It's a very good nonprofit organization. I'm so happy to be able to contribute to their cause and their mission because one of the things that I want is I want to help people with their mental health and actually help them on their road to happiness, guys. So, um, anyhow, if you would like to consult with me and have a quick 30-minute assessment where I help you structure a time management program to get you in the path, even if it's with or without me, 
The 30 minute structure plan that I want with you is that if you want to have a stronger core, more flexibility, um, you want a stronger core, more flexibility, you want to have less tension and anxiety, like the method of exercise that I perform is a functional movement system based around Pilates that is, can help you optimize your lifestyle. So, and I could do that virtually. Change Goods Brand is the virtual brand that I have that actually is the thing that I do. Also, in home training, um, I, I, I follow all the COVID precautions when I come into your home and then when I work you out. And it's like, but also, if you just don't have the time or to be at home or maybe your kids and your family time, they'll get into the way and your exercise is your own personal time, we can link and you can do it on your cell phone, your tablet, or your laptop. And you know, and also, um, I'm also available to anyone who has a business and they want to give health back to their employees. And I do group video trainings to where I can I I consistently on a weekly basis I teach a engineering firm. Um, I teach an engineering firm and I teach 250 of their employees virtually. So. I have a nice contract with them. I do it twice a week with them, all, all month, and they pay me for the month to do that. And it's a very nice thing. So if anybody would like to have group fitness, maybe you have a group of friends, like and you want to do ladies night or anything like that, and you want to just do some Pilates, get healthy together, maybe you want to do a duet with your wife, I can do two people at the same time, because what you want to do is you're of the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. So if you want to be a positive influence on people in your life, you have to give what your mission is over to other people. So anyhow, guys, I thank everybody out for coming to the Intro to Change Goods. I will be sure to post some more content. I did a lot of mindset on my content now. Now I'm going to post a lot of value on exercises and breath work because I wanted to break the superficial mindset that people have on what exercise is supposed to be. Exercise is a lifestyle that you plan on carrying out throughout the rest of your life, guys. Once again, guys, I appreciate everybody, and I really thank you all for coming and listening, and I'll post this video on Instagram and on Facebook. I got it on TikTok as well, and thank you to everybody on Zoom. I see you guys there. I really appreciate you guys and everybody, and so if you would like a 30-minute consultation on how I can assess your health, with time management and optimizing your health, feel free to DM me, tell me more, drop one in the comments, anything that you want to do. And thank you guys for taking the time to spend it with me today. And I'm going to try to do this every Friday. It's going to be much more efficient. This is the first time that I did it. So even if you don't work with me every Friday at 4 p.m., I'm going to go live and I'm going to do some breath work, some exercising, and then help coach people on how to optimize their time management to ensure that they realize that health is directly synonymous with your wealth, guys. So I really appreciate everybody, and everybody have a great day. Hey, what's up, Taylor? 10X. <laughs> and he's probably not even there anymore.